Hello and welcome to Captain Bob. Today I'm going to show you how you can take a rotary encoder, a 3D print, and a Narduino Mega into a flight simulator trim wheel. Captain Bob, Captain Bob, he's my best friend and he should be yours too. For this project you will need a rotary encoder. I'm using an EC12 rotary encoder just for fun because that's what I had. A 90 degree bracket, you can find these at your hardware store. I'll leave a link in the description. And then a servo. And you'll also need a 3D printer or just your trim wheel. You can use a circle cut out of wood and you could probably uh, shape bumps if you wanted. And I'm also using two part epoxy. It's five minute and I'll leave a link to that in the description as well. Our first step is going to be to put this rotary encoder through the 90 degree hole off camera. I just drilled this and then so now I'm going to fix it with epoxy. So now that this is all set, I'm going to just push this on and then use some more epoxy. So right here I just opened Bobiflight and we're going to go to setting or extras and then settings. And we're going to add an encoder. Uh, so add device, encoder, and we're going to use pins 7 and 8. So 7 and 8. I uh, will just go 1d10 for cycle, per cycle now. We uh, can tweak it later if we want. Uh, and then go. Then upload. And finished. And we can press OK. So now our input is trim wheel encoder. So we'll go edit. Then I don't think we need it precondition for this. Okay, so module is the module and then we're using our encoder. So right now we're going to go to event ID and then we're going to go elevator which starts with E. And then on right we're going to go elevator trim down. So now use and okay. Now we're going to see if this works. While we're waiting, we're going to do the wiring. So, we're just going to place these three wires on the little stubs, or I guess terminals, pins, on the Arduino, and just press them in. It helps to do them individually. Then the middle one's going to go to ground, so we can assign that. And then the other two are going to go to 7 and 8. So now we have this working. And just in time. Now that we have it all wired, we can go ahead and run. So now, it looks like it's moving. Uh, so that's perfect. And if we want, we can go over to settings and adjust the uh, detents per cycle. So let's see this. Uh, we're going to try this to see if it works. So now it seems to be working a little bit better. It seems twice as, I guess, active. Um, but it is going the wrong way. So we can either just switch around these pins, which is the easiest fix I find, or you can go, or if you want to be, do it uh, through the program, you can switch these events, so 
it would be, I guess, up and then down instead of down and then up. So you just switch those. So now we have the trim wheel all set up, but we do not have the little servo for the takeoff position. So for our servo that shows you the little trim output, we're going to go to settings, and then movie flight modules, uh, movie flight mega, and we're going to add a device. Let's go uh, with a servo, and we're going to use, let's use pin 20, just for fun, uh, and then upload it. Okay, upload finished. And then you press OK. Uh, let's name this Trim Servo. Trim Servo, whatever, close enough. Uh, now we're going to go, we're going to use the offset code uh, 0 Bravo Charlie 2. And I found that at the Project Magenta FSU IPCC offsets list. Uh, and that was very helpful. And then this is a 2 byte system, so there's 4 Fs. And we'll adjust the transformation later so that there are no negative values, because servos hate being negative. So we're going to use our move flight module and our servo. So this is our servo right here. And with a and we can test that later. So when you are wiring your servo, you're gonna go pin. 18 right here and then for th that's the lightest wire on this one and then the middle wire on this is going to go to pin 5V and then the darkest pin or the last one goes to ground now we can test it so test and then stop it has 100 or about 180 degrees so uh, that is perfect. I think it's, yeah, I think it's just shy of 180. Uh, that might be because of my air. Okay, so, when you get this running, it will not want to do it right. Uh, it'll be like, uh, this. Does it? Yeah. Uh, this isn't necessarily what we want. It's going to whack up here, and then... Uh, it's, it's just not having it. We'll go with that. So, that is because the max value is wrong with this. So, we're going to uh, unplug the servo. And then we're going to do some testing to see which values we need to set. So, we're going to test uh, trim all the way down. And trim all the way down is 12.45.2. So we're going to write that down in our notepad. Or sticky note. So to find your minimum and maximum value, you go run uh, without the, our, the stepper motor attached. I just uh, disconnected it from the jump, jumper cables. Uh, and then you can go to FSX and right here. Uh, that's the lowest uh, FSU P IPC value. So uh, let's go 16, 384. Uh, and then you also need to find the highest. So that would be trim up. So let's go. Oh, it's in the negatives. Stepper motors hate being negative. Optimists. Uh, go way down. So, and then the max is uh, negative 16, 383. So we're going to keep these two numbers and go to edit. <clears throat> then, with the transformation, you're going to use your negative value uh, and then add that. So, 16, 383, because servos hate being negative. Don't do that. Mm -mm. So, you're going to write S plus 16, 
38.3 as uh, servos as you want it to cancel out and become zero instead of a negative number. So, uh, go to display now, and then this is your maximum value. So you can just copy and paste this. And then, oh, it's not connected. But then this will sh or should work. So, let's see, run and pause. Uh, let's see. So, let's see. Uh, uh, but of course, now that we added onto the value, we have to look at this value instead of this value. So, this value is 32,767. Ah, oh, I love the 767. Okay, so let's go into edit. And then, the maximum now is 327. 67. So, uh, let's see how this is going to work. So now we have our functioning trim wheel for the Cessna. So you can use these numbers if you're using a Cessna, or at least I assume you can. Uh, you cannot use them if you're using another airplane as they are different so you'll have to go through and do trim all the way up use this value and then add it to the equation in transform and then it should work so now that this works if you want to restrict the the amount of travel you can always go to here and then let's say I want half of the amount of travel. So in this case it would be 90 degrees because half of 180 is 90. So let's see that. And then run. And then... So... So it's there. Then... And now you'll see that it's that it only traveled 90 degrees. Uh, if we want 40 degrees, we could go even more. And then... <laughs> and now... It's only traveling 45 degrees. Ta-da! So now we can install them into the simulator. So now this is working with the simulator. And so November 704 Darling Below contact Denver departure on 121 decimal 5. Squad 7600. Zero, zero.